Oh, hey! You just caught me on my couch, not seeing you there. Holding a Nintendo 64 controller, reminiscing about the good old days. So, you know, we're talking about Banjo-Kazooie. Do you guys remember that era of gaming on YouTube where the most popular form of Nintendo content was just fans reminiscing about their favorite childhood gaming experiences? It's an era I remember very fondly and it taught me two important things. One, Sonic 06 is directly Satan's spawn and should not be messed with. And two, if someone is talking about a game they're nostalgic for, their review might not be the most reliable. This is something I know too well. You see 500 videos saying, oh, Sonic Heroes isn't that bad. And then you realize it's not that. It's actually just a waste of $40. But throughout all of this, there was one game that I found to be truly as good as everyone said, maybe even better. That game is Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. But we already looked at that game, so Banjo-Kazooie it is. Banjo-Kazooie was released for the N64 alongside a bunch of other amazing Nintendo published games, but the game actually wasn't made by Nintendo. No, instead the game was helmed by an at the time frequent collaborator Rareware. Rare was an amazing asset for Nintendo. During the SNES era, they managed to make the amazing Donkey Kong Country trilogy for Nintendo. These games used 2D sprites of 3D models to make the games super realistic. In the N64 era, Rare continued in helping Nintendo by making more revolutionary games for them to publish. The N64 era was very light on new games, so it's a good thing they even had Rare to put out these releases. These games included such iconic titles as Diddy Kong Racing, GoldenEye 007, Donkey Kong 64, Perfect Dark, Conker's Bad Fur Day, and of course, Banjo-Kazooie and its sequel, Banjo-Tooie. I might cover Banjo-Tooie one day. That game is much harder to get access to though, and I've also heard some pretty mixed things about it. Not that quality has ever really stopped me from making a bad decision. On a completely unrelated note, I got a $5 knee surgery this morning, and I feel great. Banjo-Kazooie was first shown off to the world at E3 1997. Initially, it was supposed to be a game exclusive to the 64 disk drive, a failed add-on to the N64 that never left Japan. This reveal is very short. It's just two minutes of Banjo walking around an old build of the second world of the game. That's nothing exciting by today's standards, but I'm sure this was more than a little exciting for people at this time. This was right during the boom of 3D platformers. While many now will attribute Banjo as a genre-defining title, at the time it was probably seen more as one of many. This was likely because of the sheer amount of 3D platformers in this era. If it wasn't Banjo, it was Mario. If it wasn't Mario, it was Crash. If it wasn't Crash, it was Glover or Rayman or Gex or Donkey Kong. But don't take my word for it. Seriously, don't. I'm a stupid f***ing Zoomer who didn't grow up in that era. On June 29th, 1998, Banjo-Kazooie released on the N64, receiving a 92% on Metacritic and selling 3 million copies worldwide. The story for this one is very simple, as most gaming stories were at the time. The evil witch Gruntilda wants to be the prettiest person in the world. Sympathetic villain? Check. Using her magic brewing pot, she learns that there is someone prettier than her. Gruntilda races off to kidnap this person so she can steal all her prettiness for herself. The girl she takes is Tootie, our main protagonist Banjo's little sister. Naturally, it's now up to Banjo and his bird friend Kazooie to save Tootie and stop Gruntilda. I think the tone of this game is pretty apparent. It's very in-your-face cartoony. It takes every opportunity to make a dumb joke and never takes itself seriously. If the premise doesn't have you convinced, the ways you complete objectives probably will. Race a polar bear on a sled, slam Kazooie into a camel's hump, or transform into a crocodile so you can go inside a bigger crocodile where you will then go on to challenge another small crocodile in a competition. All right, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. This game is a collectathon with 10 levels to explore. You reach each of those levels by traversing Gruntilda's lair. As you navigate her lair, Gruntilda will hurl insults at you? My filthy bed gives me a rash. I never wash, I save my cash. 
I mean, she's got me there. The main collectibles of this game are the Jiggies, golden puzzle pieces that are used to unlock new levels. There's 10 hidden in each level, and you get them by reaching certain areas or by completing challenges. The other primary collectibles are the music notes. There's a hundred of these spread across each level and are spread out like coins in Mario 64. They're similar to the coins in Mario 64, as it's easy to find the majority of them, but when you're nearing the 100 mark, you'll probably struggle to find the rest. The last set of collectibles are the honeycomb pieces. There's two hidden in each level, and collecting six increases your health bar. These are much better hidden than anything else in the game. Your music note counter resets whenever you leave a level in the N64 version, so dying will cause you to have to recollect them all if you didn't safely leave with all 100 first. The purpose of these notes is to open up passages in Gruntilda's lair to progress further. The game already locks you to certain areas by your abilities and your jiggy count, so I really don't see the point of this. Not that it really matters, the music notes are fun to collect because the levels are fun to explore. Mostly. Alright, let's get this one out of the way first. Rusty f***it Bay is one of my least favorite levels in any 3D platformer. It f***ed my wife and made this video take an extra year to come out. It cucked me. We're talking Rusty Cucket Bay here. Aside from that stage, I've got no complaints. Mumbo's Mountain, Treasure Trove Cove, Freeze Easy Peak, Mad Monster Mansion, and Bubble Goop Swamp are all fantastic. Each has great visuals, music, and creates a strong atmosphere that really evokes the feeling of the area. Seriously, I know this is a Nintendo 64 game, but it's very pretty to look at. The cartoony style is really nice despite all the blockiness. Most areas have upgrades for Banjo and Kazooie, which gives you new attacks or new ways to move around the area. Yes, there's a progression system in this game! You actually get new abilities to hone as you progress! By the end, Banjo is able to use Kazooie to shoot projectiles, fly, jump real high, run, and even become invincible. It's a really nice touch in... Um... I really hope PETA doesn't find out about, uh... This one... Entering the first world and we've got a few things to get used to. In every world there are five hidden Jinjos to rescue. Doing this will get you a Jiggy. What is a Jinjo? You pick now to start asking questions? To say they're hidden would be a bit of an exaggeration. They're usually right in the open, but it encourages exploration, so I don't mind. The other big part of this game is Mumbo Jumbo. He lives in different huts across most of the world. It's in these huts that you're able to transform into different animals to access new areas of the map. Oh, it seems you need Mumbo tokens to transform. Not to worry, I can just find some outside and- It's come, oh come. What was that? It's come, oh come. It's come, oh come. It's come, oh come. What? Oh, this is so cool. I can turn into different animals now, too. How did Rareware do this so fast? Like, they basically release two games every year, and they're all so deep in mechanics and content. Wow. One area worth discussing above all others is Click Clock Woods. It's not the best level in the game, but it's certainly the most inventive. You know Tiny Huge Island from Super Mario 64 where the stage gets all big and small depending on the pipe you take? Well, this level is just that, but on steroids. Instead of big and small, you can choose between different seasons. This completely changes the look of the map, and each season will limit or grant you access to new areas. I think it's safe to say that this game is much better than Super Mario 64. Both games are great, but I think Banjo just takes things to another level. A question I found myself asking throughout my entire entire playthrough was, is this game better than Super Mario Odyssey? Now I know that seems insane to say, I mean one has infinitely more content and came out on a system that isn't struggling to render a sphere, but collecting jiggies and music notes is much more fun than collecting moons and purple coins in Odyssey. It's much more replayable as you always have an objective to complete, whereas Odyssey is just ground pound here. Okay, move on. Alright, I finished all the worlds. I have all the jiggies I need to go fight Gruntilda. Let's go. Are you serious? Oh my god, that's amazing. Until it isn't. Look, the idea is really fun, but this quiz show thing sucks. What's that photo of? Gee, I don't know. What do you use to wash your hair? 
How should I know? Okay, you can actually bump into Gruntilda's sister and she gives you these answers, but why would I remember that? I'm not writing that stuff down, sheesh. All right, I've completed the game show and saved the day. Tootie can come home now and, uh, oh, that's really cute. The credits feature all the characters we've met on our journey, nice. And then we get a fun scene of Banjo hanging out with his buddies. Oh, yeah, I guess we still have to beat Gruntilda. Let's go do that, and... Oh. Looks like I don't have enough jiggies to go fight her. I could go get the rest, but... What? All right, this looks pretty cool. You have to use all your abilities to take her down and it ends with you summoning the mighty Jinjonator. Whoa, she's dead. Like, fully dead. They did that? Zelda wouldn't even do that. Oh my God. I really like Banjo-Kazooie, you guys. I don't know if you could tell or not. This is my favorite collectathon. Is this my favorite N64 game? I don't know. Paper Mario is a very difficult game to beat for me, but it comes really close. There's honestly so much I could say about this game. So let's do it. This game has an optional tutorial. Why do games still not let you skip those today? The music in this game is absolutely incredible. Grant Kirkhope, I love you. Spiral Mountain is so cool and it didn't even need to exist. All these characters are so fun and wacky. Bottles is here. God, this game is so much fun. I think I could even sing about it. Cheap knee surgery. Not a good idea. F*** Banjo Tooie. You know, as challenging as this game can be, I've never actually seen the game over screen, so let's see what happens. Alright, that's enough of that. Sorry, Tootie, I'm done.